Hello and welcome to CNN News 18. This is Kumalika Sengupta. Tripura election heat is rising. The political temperature is rising and all the big shots, big wigs are now camping in Tripura for the election, which is due on 16th. Now, Trinamool Congress is also a new player in Tripura. This time they have also fitted 28 candidates. Mamta Banerjee, Abhishek Banerjee will be reaching Tripura on the 6th and we have with us the uh, Trinamool Congress MP and the person who looks after Trinamool Congress in Tripura, Shushmita Dev with us. She is also very busy. But thanks, Shushmita. You have given us time. Welcome to uh, CNN News 18. The first question is now, how is the Josh? Well, uh, we've been here for uh, almost a year and a half. It hasn't been an easy journey because of the violence um, that unfolded against us because of which we could not even open our office till June of 2022, as you know. But in these difficult circumstances, we have put together an organization. I will not say in all 60 seats, but uh, wherever we could. And I believe that uh, what is critical in the state of Tripura is what people are thinking. And let me tell you why, Komalika. In the municipal elections, our candidates could not step out. They were beaten black and blue. Our candidates could not cast their own vote for their party. And yet people of Tripura stood by us. Congress was nowhere on the ground. The left was nowhere on the ground. Trinamool was fighting the BJP head on. So people of Tripura are very astute, politically very sharp. And I believe that we have the right narrative to ensure that once and if the voters can reach the polling station, I believe Trinamool Congress uh, will have the blessings of the people. And the, as far as the Josh is concerned, there's absolutely no way of operating in Tripura unless you have Josh. Because as you know, that you have to, uh, you know, you have to uh, really be courageous to go out there and even campaign in this current situation. Um, Shushmita, the question is obviously <clears throat> the Joshi is high, you, uh, your words reflected. But the point is, even after that, why Trinamool Congress fielded only 28 seats, candidate in 28 seats? You see, uh, we were crystal clear in our internal discussions that uh, we will not give candidates for the sake of giving candidates. We will give candidates where we have an organization we will give candidates who are prepared from before and uh, uh, you see election the process of election is such that we everybody wants a ticket doesn't matter what position the party is in in certain seats so for instance we had 129 plus applications in all 60 seats cumulatively but we tried to select very carefully because we want to fight to win we don't want to fight for the sake of fighting we don't want to fight, uh, you know, where, where, where we feel we can't fare well. If we wanted to fight to win, this was the formula we can think of. 28 is definitely not the magic number. But if we had given in 60 seats, I think the message to the people of Tripura would have been very wrong. Because people of Tripura are very well aware where we have strong candidates and where we are uh, in a position to put up a fight. Another question comes up, Shushmita, that <clears throat> there is an alliance game going on, a seat sharing game going on in Tripura. We have left in Congress, the arch rivals, they have shaked hands for seat sharing, though they had hiccups. We had uh, we have Tripura Motha, we, uh, who had talks with almost every party except you all. Why did Trinamool Congress did not go for any alliance talk with anyone? You see... <clears throat> Let's look at it this way, that Trinamul Congress repeatedly said that the primary goal of the party is to defeat the BJP. I don't think from the start till the end, there was any doubt about that. But you see the seat sharing that has happened. There has been a lot of misrepresentation. There has been a lot of confusion like you yourself said. Repeatedly, Congress and, and CPM gave a message directly or indirectly that they are tying up with Tripura Motha, but it never happened. Exactly. So they tried to write that wave that they believe Tripura Motha had by saying we are tying up, we are in talks with uh, the chairman of the Tripura Motha party. 
But yesterday was the last day of withdrawal and Tripura Matha has stuck to 42 seats. So clearly there has been no seat sharing, there has been no understanding over there. But it is interesting to see that Mota has not uh, uh, given a candidate against Jitin Chaudhary and neither have they given a candidate in the uh, uh, in the uh, city, Agartala city. So what kind of understanding they have, we don't know. As for us, we kept our doors open right in the end. But if if other parties didn't want to have a dialogue, just like what happened in Goa, as you know, you have watched Goa elections very clearly. There was no way for us to back away, given that we had built an organization and we had enough aspirants. So I think uh, this seat sharing between the left and the Congress, one also has to ask whether it's going to work on the ground. You see, having an alliance at the top, which doesn't work at the bottom, can be a very bitter experience. So given the fact that we are here for the long run in Tripura, we thought uh, in consultation with our top leaders that we waited till the end. Since there was no dialogue, we went ahead and did what we could do best strategically to ensure that our fight is against the BJP and no one else. The left, your critics, the left says that, uh, left in one hand says that all should fight together. But on the other hand, Manik Sarkar told us that Tr Trinamool Congress is benefiting BJP. Tripura Motha says that Pradut has high regards for Mamta Banerjee, but uh, Trinamool Congress has no scope in Tripura. What's your take on that? You see, whether Trinamool Congress has a scope or no, only time will tell. But in a democracy, a party who, which participates in an electoral process. It's their right. It's their political right to do so. So this narrative about you have no chance, why are you on the field? That way no party can ever go anywhere. What I do need to tell your viewers here is, Trinamul Congress has never entered a state where there is a non-BJP government. You please look at Meghalaya. NPP was an ally of the BJP till recently. In Assam, BJP has formed government for the second time. Congress is in a weak position. In Goa, you saw that we went to a state where BJP was in power. And what happened? People voted for the Congress, didn't vote for the TMC. Eight MLAs of the Congress party have shifted to the BJP. You So please, I ask your viewers to make an objective analysis of the situation. And our critics may say what they want to. I can have a counter question. That Motha today, apart from the 20 ST seats, has given 22 plus seats. That means one thing is clear that most of the tribal voters are not with the BJP. So Motha giving seats in non-tribal seats where there are tribal votes. Doesn't the non-BJP vote go to Motha where they can't win? So look, I don't want to insinuate anything. But I think it's a little unfair to consistently keep targeting the Trinamool to say, why are you in the field? It doesn't uh, look well in a democracy where every party has a right to fight an election. But Shushvita, don't you think that the momentum with which you all started in 2021 and the way uh, you all alleged that there was huge violence, huge attack on the municipal polls passed by, after that, the momentum was lost. <clears throat> See, I'll tell you something, Kamalika. Wherever we have uh, expanded, if you like, uh, we have projected uh, the leaders of the state. So no one can say we delayed in choosing, uh, you know, the head of the organization, which we did in Tripura. Now, you cannot expect Abhishek Bandhapadai and leaders from Calcutta to consistently come and hold fort here. We depended on the local leaders here. Why do people say we lost the tempo? Because they expected, they ex they didn't expect, uh, I mean, you cannot expect Calcutta leaders to hold forth over here. But let me tell you something, at the cost of repeating myself, despite the violence, on every issue it was Trinamool Congress on the streets. It was, there was no left and no Congress. Please go back to every Twitter handle in the year of 2022. We were on the ground, but this narrative is being run by our uh, uh, opponents, our political opponents, because the only force that can fight the BJP is Sinamul Congress, and nobody wants Sinamul Congress to come up. 
so on that one aspect they are all united but if you were to look at the newspapers and you look at the social media or any other media forum there has not been a single moment that trinamool congress has moved away from the field so it's a very convenient narrative to put us down but i don't think it's going to work Jushmita, if we compare it with Meghalaya, the election is later in Meghalaya. But don't you think that Drunamul putting more emphasis on Meghalaya? The manifesto has come up. Uh, the Chief Minister Mamta and Chief Minister of Bengal has visited there. Whereas Tripura, the election is on the 16th, and still you don't have the, you know, you have not released the manifesto uh, till now. See, I'll tell you something about the manifesto. Way back in 2021, when I first came to Tripura, we started a campaign saying. Tripura Junne Trinamool. Our branded cars came, and the idea was to go out in the field and talk to people and prepare a manifesto. Komalika, you are witness what unfolded. They broke my car. They manhandled uh, me. They beat up our workers. We cannot campaign. Opposition party have, offices have been bombed, have been burned. Is there any comparison between the uh, political atmosphere in Meghalaya and in Tripura? You tell me that you are talking about a manifesto. Our manifesto is ready. We'll be releasing it in the next few days, and uh, we have consistently taken stands on issues that are impacting the people. So I think uh, the advantage that we have in Tripura and what we have played up is the good governance of Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee in Bengal over uh, the last two terms and the present term. I think what stands good for us is Mamata Di has uh, done more than what has been in our manifesto in the past. People in Tripura are far more aware of the work Mamata Di is doing and her welfare schemes than in Meghalaya, and she remains our uh, topmost brand in this state. So I think to draw a comparison between Meghalaya and Tripura is a little unfair because the political situation is very different. Another thing I'd like to say. With the alliance seat sharing, what is happening? Who's going with uh, who? That situation did not exist in Meghalaya. So, for our top leadership to set foot in Tripura, I think a lot of things had to first fall in place. So, I think strategically the time is right. I think the uh, picture is now clear, and this is the time the top leaders should come. See, Komalika, there is a demand for Tripura land here. Please understand, it's a very sensitive issue. So for I want to ask you leaders, that question only. Yeah, mm. so for our top leaders to jump in without thinking what's happening, because see, I can avoid that question. A Rajiv Banerjee can avoid that question, but leaders like Mamata Bandhabadha and Abhishek Banerjee cannot avoid those questions. So unless our entire narrative was set in place, I think uh, the timings had to be strategically decided who's going to come when. So, what's your narrative on the Tripura land, the Greater Tripura land? You know, the, uh, another state uh, that has been claimed by Pradyut, and he wants a written, uh, written assurance from any of the national parties. See, in a democracy, any party can raise any demand. Okay, I mean, you cannot, uh, I cannot say why, why has he raised this demand, or it's not fair, or it's not justified. That's not my call. It's not for me to judge that. But yes. If you look at Article 2 and 3, which Pradip Manika consistently talks about, you have yourself engaged with him. It is a demand for a separate state. And what he is demanding is any party who seeks his help must put it in writing that they accept his demand. And the reality is no matter who says what, not a single party till today has been able to give that. Because I feel it takes... A, it takes a bill to be introduced by the President of India, which has to be referred by the Legislative Assembly. So this is a demand that is out there, and it's for the people of Tripura to decide. If you like, it's a kind of referendum on that. So for us to step in and say this is right or this is wrong, I don't think it is anything short of just a political gimmick. And we are a party which doesn't believe in gimmicks. But having said that, I'm crystal clear that in a democracy, any party can have any demand and they are going to vote, putting that demand in front of the people and the people of Tripura will decide. So you will wait and watch what that uh, results come out after the election, that how Tripura Mutha does. If Tripura Mutha does well, then uh, is there any chance that there is a post-poll alliance with uh, Tripura Mutha? Will there be any approach from Trinamool Congress? 
or if you they approve what, what the will poll, see what will what will happen post poll or we can, I, I cannot speculate right now because a lot demands uh, a lot depends on the numbers so me for me to speculate right now is out of the question but this i can tell you with great conviction and complete assurance that there is no question there is no question of uh, we will do everything in our power to keep the bjp out that we are sure of how do you rate uh, uh, pradyut manikus tripra motha sorry what, uh, what number will you give to tripra motha's uh, the, you know uh, pradyut manik uh, this tripra motha the new party which did well in the autonomous election see kamalita mm -hmm. i'll tell you something uh, cpm was very strong in the st seats in the past as you know and secondly i'd like to say that cpm the left is contesting most of the st seats there is the ipft and then there is the motha we have given around 6 st seats and 4 sc seats so to say that uh, motha will have a walk over is i think going too far and uh, as as the days go by the picture will become clearer but no doubt they are forced to reckon with but i think there's a huge overlap in the vote bank of the left and the motha so we will have to see what happens there and i think it's a it's a very tricky election in tripura it's not Absolutely. going to be it's not going it's not going to be easy for anyone to predict mm -hmm. but as a trinamool as a trinamool congress leader i all i can say is here we are here for the long run we are here to fight and i hope that the way we've given us seats people believe me when i say that we are here to win those seats and another question is how do you rate this left in congress seat sharing alliance kamalika what can i say uh, one is not an alliance two it's a seat sharing and they've given a national party like the indian national congress only 13 seats and what is also in the minds of the people that how many people will remain in the congress after they win you saw what happened in goa at the cost of repeating myself so there are many dynamics here so let's see how it unfolds and uh, you are a journalist who has watched bengal politics very closely you are very well aware what happened to the left and congress alliance in the last bengal assembly elections they drew a zero so let's see it is one thing for a few leaders to win and come and it is another thing to two for two parties to come to power after seat alliance after seat sharing so let's see how it goes like i said it's a very tricky election another two questions i have the last that you know in this all this seat sharing alliance tripura motha tribal non tribal vote what is actually the issue of tripura election don't you think that is getting a little bit blurred and can you please tell us that what is the actual issue of tripura elections see to my mind the biggest question in the minds of the people of tripura is unemployment there is huge unemployment and bjp had made a promise that one missed call and every house go hold will get one job which has not happened the health sector the health infrastructure is in shambles a basic need like drinking water is not there in the homes of the people so i think these three things are a very big issue here and i cannot deny the fact that the demand of a greater tripura land will bear in the minds of the people who uh, uh, vote that uh, will, should there be a new state that should come out of tripura because remember that the tribal population may be lesser in tripura but uh, the kind of land that the tribal area entails is i think uh, more than 50% mm. so it's mm. it's a lot of things but you see what i learn from my past experience in, in, in elections as the days go by and the closer we get to election people will start making the up their minds slowly and gradually because that time when they go in front of the evm machine that's when they start really thinking who's on the ground and who's a better option and a stronger option but i do mm. believe that trinamool congress brings a new option to the people of tripura and i hope Uh, that it works bjp's out. bjp's chief ministerial change will that benefit them or how do you rate that bjp's chief ministerial change is one uh, a big message to the people that bjp actually accepted that they have failed the people of tripura in the last four and a half years a sitting chief minister was changed so they realized that they did not have the people's uh, support 
and that's the reason they changed the chief minister which will work as a black mark in their uh, track record in tripura in the last 5 years and i think it speaks volumes one last question mamta banerji is coming on the 6th amit shah is also coming on the 6th mr nadda is uh, will be having meeting here what mantra will be take will you be taking for from mamta banerji and abhishek banerji because for the last one and a half years we have been seeing you in tripura day in and day out and how you know what what are the numbers you are looking for actually you see uh, mamta ji uh, tripura is very close to west bengal geographically and otherwise uh, and linked they have seen the kind of work mamta ji has done they have seen the way she spot the bjp in the last assembly election so she is a very big brand uh, uh, she exudes confidence amongst the people and i believe that after her visit to tripura lots will change so i am very optimistic kamalika as a uh, and at the same time i am a realist so i don't want to be overconfident but i think uh, i think that uh, what abhishek bandopadhyay and mamata di uh, take to the people is a more is a is a good governance model the the model of uh, welfare state i think the kind of schemes mamata di has un, uh, has given to the people of bengal speaks volumes it has been recognized nationally and internationally like dware sarkar like konna shri like lokhi shri and i think that's our usp in tripura we will definitely hold out our governance model and that's our strength so the trinamool congress it was shushmita dev thank you shushmita it was we will go to tripura and again track that how trinamool congress is doing there and we'll meet you in tripura all the best to you and here shushmita dev was they are quite confident they are projecting that trinamool congress can dent in tripura to some extent and they are very confident without any alliance right now thanks a lot shushmita we'll meet you in tripura and all the best thank you so much kamalika take care